In the world of wine, we tend to get really excited about the best of the best, the pinnacle. For wine fanatics like us, you know, we fantasize about those bottles that we've heard about, wines that we've walked past in the bottle shop, I scrolled past on Instagram or heard these secondhand stories. We're all about chasing this pinnacle of a variety, a region, a style. And we work so hard to, you know, maybe we like, you know, pocket pennies and just like scrimp and save, live off rice and beans and instant noodles for weeks on end, just so we could get the potential to actually buy this bottle. And if we do get that bottle and we open it up, we pour it out and then it's a dud. It's a deflating experience. In the contemporary wine consuming landscape, we have this concept of like hype wines where super famous producers, whether they be like icons like Raveno, DRC, Opus One, Grange for Australia, or whether it be in the kind of more modern natural wine influenced world. We have Radicons, Nicholas Scholli, Frank Canellison. These wines are like cult level status. And it's not like you can try these wines before you buy them. And it's not even like you can actually buy them really, really easily. They're not widely available. You have to kind of search it out, seek it out. And so it kind of begs the question, are these hype wines actually worth it? Well, kind of, sort of, like, Yes, no, it's a bit complicated, so let's kind of break it down. So we'll start off with the icons and why the prices are the way they are. Icon producers all over the world. We've got plenty here in Australia, there'll be plenty in your backyard, whether it be the States or France, Italy, Spain. If it's a you know reputable wine producing country, you've got your own version of an icon. A lot of these producers have really, really long and storied histories. They've been around for generations. Take, for example, the pinnacle of wine brands, arguably in the world world, Domaine de la Romani Conti, or it's as it's affectionately known, DRC. The vineyard of Romani Conti that Domaine de la Romani Conti gets its name after has been around for over a thousand years. It's been written about as not only the pinnacle of Burgundy, but France as a whole. You know, it's been written about by famous authors or archbishops. It's had hundreds of years of heaping praise. It's even been owned by princes. It survived German occupation in World War II. It's got some legacy, but given its reputation, it's a pretty small producer. It only makes about 6,000 cases a year. So there's this massive element of scarcity to everything they do. So you've got world-renowned quality, incredible history and scarcity. These are kind of the pillars of wine economics and why the prices are so high you're paying for a lot more than just the liquid. And to be honest, something similar can be said for the kind of flag bearers of natural wine. Producers like Radicon and Ganavat, like their reputations precede them and their volumes that they produce are, again, really, really small. With the rise of natural wine, there have been flag bearers for this kind of ethos-based movement. That's kind of the pillar of natural wine. It is all about ethics and ideology. And, you know, you're basically paying for their work and those ideas. And that kind of work commands a bit of a premium pricing. You know, whilst the history is definitely shorter than a producer like DRC, it's become really, really well established and well regarded over a shorter period of time. With this ethos, you know, biodynamic farming, organic farming, exclusively hand-picked fruit, there is a higher cost imbued in that. Same can be said for DRC as a biodynamic and, you know, exclusively hand-picked producer. But this is across the board with natural wine. So the cost of producing the wines are a lot higher. So that is definitely a part of it as well. And then you're also paying for a lack of protection in the winery. So it might seem like they're reducing their cost by adding less things. They're not adding sulfur for the winery. They're not adding acids and stabilizing agents. They're not finding and filtering and all that kind of different stuff. But to achieve this ethos, they are taking the risk of having an unstable product and they can do as much as they can within the winery. It's all about the transport. So all of these iconic natural wine producers, a lot of their cost is actually invested in the transport of these wines. So they're paying for an entire shipping container to be refrigerated. So that's a massive additional cost. So they can ensure that their wine stays stable from traveling from the south of Italy all the way to New New Zealand. That's a long journey. So they're investing a lot to make sure that wine can be as stable as possible. With wines that are a bit more conventionally made, inside of having a full refrigerated container, there might be a little bit more cost effective in some of those management techniques. And that's not just a cost imparted onto by the producer, that's also a cost imparted onto by the importer who is taking on a large amount of the risk. The more steps you take from transferring from winery to customer and, and you include export and things like that, you're adding additional costs. So that's kind of why these prices are so high. But 
does it necessarily justify the cost of the wine? Is the wine good enough to stack up to those prices? And to be honest, I can only really speak about my experiences. I've never had DRC, I've never had Raveno or anything like that, but I've, I've flirted with a few icons here and there. As far as like the natural wine, hypebeast stuff, the stuff that, you know, Action Bronson and Freddie Gibbs post on their Instagrams, to be honest, it's 50-50. It is a bit of a roll of the dice. Sometimes it is one of the most joyous wine drinking experiences you've ever had. On the other hand, I've also had really faulty, near undrinkable examples of similar producers as well. And it is really frustrating when you've dropped 100, 150 to 200 dollars on this bottle of wine and it's not that tasty but I guess it's how much you value that experience. Are you willing to kind of roll the dice, ready to put your chips all in on a wine and hope you get this amazing life-changing like hair stand up in your neck and style of drinking experience? Do you want that enough? But the good thing about those wines, you know, whilst some of them may be faulty and a little bit, you know, maybe not perfect, at least I can actually afford them. That cannot necessarily be said about iconic Burgundy or Bordeaux or Champagne. I can't afford Sassicaia. I can't afford Hill of Grace. I can't afford basically anything that's been produced out of the Napa Valley. And the people that Bernie Sanders rails about, they're the customers for these wines. For me personally, the overt money grabbing by these iconic producers is more infuriating to me than any faulty bottle of Domain Locke de Vin. But in these wines defense, when I have had the ability to try some of them, they've been amazing. This is not a common experience for me. I'm very limited, but when I have tried some of these wines, you know, they are kind of mind bending experience. They can really give you goosebumps. They are absolutely brilliant. You know, even in an Australian context been able to taste you know Hill of Grace at a really good vintage is a beautiful experience and I can still almost taste those wines that being said sadly I won't be able to taste those wines again unless someone else is paying for them or I strike gold in my backyard I don't have a backyard overall if a hype wine is really worth it that's kind of in the eye of the beholder if you're really happy to play in that kind of sub $100 price bracket you can pretty much guarantee you're gonna have a good time. You don't really need to worry about much. There's not gonna be too many wines that are gonna be, you know, overpriced or not worth it. You're gonna, your disappointment will be reduced. And that's where, you know, most good wine sits. And that's where a lot of it is worth your time. But what I can say is that into that hype wine, you know, icon producer, natural wine guru area, it's where the wines can become almost indescribably delicious. With that being said, there's a high price to pay. The barrier for entry is is pretty extreme. But if you're lucky, if you budget accordingly, or you've just got some really generous mates, you can really maybe hopefully one day try the kind of otherworldly experiences, those kind of haunting parts of the world.